Hello, my name is Ben Lovegrove, and in this video I'm going to talk about the UFO sightings, close encounters, crop circles, and other paranormal activity that took place in and around Winchester in Hampshire during the 1970s. These include the close encounters of the third kind as described by Mrs Joyce Bowles and her neighbour Ted Pratt in 1976 and 1977, some of the earliest crop circles, and the Wessex Triangle. This video is a curation of information and versions of the accounts, drawing upon information supplied by a variety of websites and files, details of which can be found below this video on YouTube. These cases are of particular interest to me as I was a teenager at the time living just outside Winchester. I had already developed a keen interest in the paranormal and remember watching the accounts given on the local TV news with rapt attention. Over 40 years later, many people will be unaware of these supernatural events, so this video may generate some new or renewed interest in these strange tales. But first, a short history lesson. Let's begin with a few words about Winchester itself, as some of its history may be of significance to the events described. Winchester is of course the ancient capital of England and Wessex. You would be hard pressed to find a more historic city, especially in the south of England. Due to continuous settlement over millennia, the city and its surrounding areas are rich in archaeological sites. Neolithic remains have been found in Winnell, to the northeast of the city, and in Twyford and Shawford, to the southeast. There are Bronze Age barrows or tumuli on Magdalen Hill Downs to the east of the city, and others have been found in Chilcombe, Twyford. Oliver's Battery, Compton and Flowerdown. Evidence of Iron Age enclosures have been found in several locations including Headbourne Worthy and Pitt Down. The first permanent settlement in today's city was at the Western Edge on the high ground known today as Orham's Arbour. Here members of the Celtic Belgae tribe established a community that was to last 200 years until the arrival of the Romans. Unlike so many other Iron Age settlements, the Romans didn't find it necessary to besiege and conquer here, but instead settled and assimilated the Belgae, creating the market town of Venta Belgarum. The most prominent feature, though, is St. Catherine's Hill to the southeast of the city. This small Iron Age hill fort is topped with a clump of beech trees that mark the site of St. Catherine's Chapel, and nearby there is a mismaze. We'll be returning to St. Catherine's Hill later on. Fast forward to the fall of the Roman Empire, the Dark Ages, and the arrival of the Jutes, Angles, Saxons, and Danes. The small kingdoms they established still exist today in the form of the counties of Kent, East Anglia, Sussex, Middlesex, and Wessex. King Alfred the Great, ruler of the West Saxons and King of Wessex, is the best known figurehead of Winchester's past. Born in Wantage, he was a scholar, warrior, and leader who united the region's warlords and after several setbacks eventually defeated the Danes. Coincidentally, my ancestors are also from Wantage and eventually some of us settled in Winchester. There are several love groves buried in the graveyards of East Challow to the west of Wantage. Here is my second great-grandfather, William James Lovegrove, strolling through the market square in Wantage over a hundred years ago. According to the 1911 census, he was lodging at the White Horse Public House in Grove Street at the time. Perhaps it's from him that I have inherited a love of ale and pub food. He's buried in Wantage, but my father is buried in Magdalen Hill Cemetery, not far from the aforementioned Bronze Age Barrows on Magdalen Hill Downs, Temple Valley, Cheesefoot Head, and the locations of the 1976 UFO sightings. I'm going to leave the short history lesson here. If you want to learn more about Winchester, Wolvesey Palace, the Cathedral, St Cross and much more, there are many other resources online and in bookshops that will fill in the blanks. But the best way to learn is to experience the city. Stay a few days and walk through the streets and along the paths beside the River Itchen through the water meadows. This is the landscape that inspired Keats to compose to autumn. Now on to the Wessex Triangle. 
Wantage, Winchester and Warminster form what is known as the Wessex Triangle. Aviators and others who use aeronautical maps will be familiar with the acronym AIAA, which stands for Area of Intense Aerial Activity. Think of the Wessex Triangle as an AIPA, an Area of Intense Paranormal Activity. During the 1970s, crop circles appeared near Three Maids Hill Roundabout on either side of the A34 and next to the old Roman road. Later in the 1970s and during the 1980s, more crop circles appeared at Cheesefoot Head. It was one of the formations at Cheesefoot Head that kicked off the research by Colin Andrews, Terence Meaden, Pat Delgado and Busty Taylor. The first and several subsequent crop circles appeared in the natural amphitheatre created by the landscape that is skirted by the A272. Nearby is the hamlet of Temple Valley, so called as this and other lands had at one time been the possessions of the Knights Templar. It is said that the Percy Hobbs pub, which closed in 2011 at Morn Hill near Chiefsfoot Head, was a meeting point for the two crop circle makers Doug Bauer and Dave Chorley. While sceptics have satisfied themselves that Doug and Dave were behind all crop circles, it is obvious to researchers, for a variety of reasons, that they could only have made a few, not least of which was the poor examples they created for TV crews years later when the story broke. That and the fact that they would have had to have been in two places at once on the same night over many summers throughout the south of England. There seems little doubt now that many, if not most, crop circles and formations, but by no means all, are made by human hands, but the muse behind the designs created by circle makers and the paranormal events that occur before, during and after their creation will give you ample food for thought. As well as appearing near Winchester, crop circles have manifested in fields surrounding Wantage and Warminster. Other formations that appeared in Crabwood and near the Chilbolton Telescope are worthy of further investigation. For more on the subject of crop circles, I commend the work of Colin Andrews, Freddie Silver and Lucy Pringle. I mentioned St. Catherine's Hill earlier. According to Gary Biltcliffe and Caroline Hoare, co-authors of the book The Spine of Albion, St. Catherine's Hill is one of 33 nodes on a ley line that runs the length of Britain from the Isle of Wight to Balconeal in northern Scotland, hence the title of the book. I have reviewed that book in a separate video. See below or on my YouTube channel homepage. UFOs and Tall Aliens Now let's talk about what you're really here for, the close encounters of 1976 and 1977. On a November evening in 1976, Mrs. Joyce Bowles, accompanied by her friend and neighbour Ted Pratt, to whom she was giving a lift, drove out of Winchester along the A272. Their journey took them past the Bronze Age Barrows on Magdalen Hill Downs and the cemetery further along. At the Percy Hobbs roundabout, they turned right to complete their journey into Chilcombe. It was as they passed the turning to Cheesefoot Head that this mundane journey turned into an extraordinary event. They both spotted a large orange light low over the fields of Chilcombe. The light was obscured by hedges and trees as they continued down the road, then reappeared. They then took a sharp left turn into King's Lane. About 70 yards down the lane, travelling at about 20 to 25 miles per hour, the car veered to the right and the engine started to rev up of its own accord. The car was now travelling down a wide grass verge and Mrs Bowles was struggling to keep the car under control. Her passenger, Ted Pratt, grabbed the wheel as the car approached some trees, but the car then came to a stop. Ted Pratt described it as if they had hit an invisible barrier which gave as they struck it and returned them to a normal stopping position. It was then that they both saw a cigar-shaped UFO hovering in front of them, with what appeared to be a cockpit illuminated by a soft light in which stood three occupants. According to Mrs Bowles, one of the occupants left the craft and started to walk towards the car. She described hearing a whistling sound, like that of a whistling kettle. She described him as wearing a boiler suit with a polo neck collar and a seam down the right-hand side. 
The being then reached the driver's side of the car, put an arm on the roof of the car, and then looked at the startled occupants. Mrs. Bowles described him as a tall man, about six foot one or two, with very pink and piercing eyes. She said he had long blonde hair, sideboards, and a dark beard. He looked at Mrs. Bowles, at Ted Pratt, and then at the dashboard of the car. As he looked at the dashboard, the engine restarted, even though the ignition was turned off. As the engine started, the car's headlights shone at four times the usual brightness. As the figure looked at them both, Joyce Bowles said she felt fear, but Ted Pratt said he experienced calm and tranquility. The figure then, according to Mrs. Bowles' account, appeared to move around the car, at which point she leaned over to stop Ted from leaving the car. As she did so, she said, No, Ted, don't get out, and closed her eyes. When she opened them again, the figure and the object had gone. Eventually, after a few minutes, they were able to compose themselves and continue their journey. But on the following Monday, Mrs. Bowles said that she had a blotchy rash on the right side of her face, neck and shoulder. She also claimed that she had received a mysterious phone call in which she was warned not to speak of the event. If she did so, she was told, she should expect a visit from a government official but Mrs. Bowles expressed her earnest wish to tell her story and give a full account to the press. The Daily Mail carried out an investigation and found eight other accounts of glowing cigar-shaped UFOs in the skies above Winchester that weekend, suggesting some corroboration for the sightings mentioned by Joyce Bowles and Ted Pratt. And that would have been that, except six weeks later the couple were repeating the journey when they had another encounter. This time, they found themselves aboard a craft and interacting with the occupants. They were shown star charts and had some brief conversations. Eventually, they were returned to their vehicle, but found themselves on an unfamiliar road. The following spring, in May 1977, Joyce Bowles was driving again, this time with her friend Anne Strickland in the passenger seat. Again, they saw a glowing cigar-shaped object and the car coasted to a halt. An occupant from the craft approached Mrs. Bowles with arms outstretched, looking at them both, but heading for Mrs. Bowles. Both women were terrified. He began to speak to Mrs. Bowles in broken English and told her something important, but which she felt unable to divulge. Then he said something to me which I understood, but I can't tell anyone what it was. I wouldn't dare. The entity then returned to the craft, which rose to the skies with a high-pitched hum. Mrs. Strickland's account of the experience corroborated Mrs. Bowles' account. Finally, in June 1977, Joyce Bowles was driving and Ted Pratt was once again her passenger. Ted Pratt gave this account of the final meeting. They had sandy hair and were wearing dull metallic suits, he recalled. They said something about trying to help mankind something about war. They said they were scared that man would destroy himself and pollute the atmosphere. Then they just said goodbye and returned to their spacecraft. It soared away into the sky and disappeared out of sight. Other paranormal events. There are two other cases that should be included here, but for brevity I'm going to leave them out for now and perhaps cover them in a separate video. The first is the account by the Liberal Democrat councillor Adrian Hicks, who claims to have met an extraterrestrial in Winchester. There's a video of him on the Dailymotion video hosting site, rehearsing a speech that mentions the encounter, and in which he calls for full disclosure of what is known by the UK's government about ET visitors. The story was widely covered in the Daily Echo and the Metro in 2009, so I suggest you search online for further information. The second is the interruption to the Southern Television News at 10 past 5 on the 26th of November 1977. The early evening news was interrupted by a six-minute broadcast from an entity claiming to be from the Ashtar Galactic Command. The voice read a message warning humanity to abandon its weapons, end all conflicts, and to beware false prophets. You can read the message in full on ufologyweb.com. In the resources section. 
If this was a hoax, no one has ever stepped forward to claim responsibility, and the mystery remains unsolved to this day. It's interesting to compare this message with that of the crop circle that appeared at Crab Wood near Pitt, Winchester in 2002. The formation included a grey alien face and a disc that contained a message in code. Once decoded, that message was, Beware the bearers of false gifts and their broken promises. Much pain but still time. Believe. There is good out there. We oppose deception. Conduit closing. For more information on that particular event, I commend the description by Lucy Pringle on her site cropcircles.lucypringle.co.uk, a formation in a field east of Winchester just off Serum Road. Here ends this short flight into the Wessex Triangle. Are you still with me? Please give this video a like and share it with others. Consider embedding it in a suitable blog, website or forum. And subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.